abilities anywhere, okay? <clears throat> and this food is so good, right? You're going to attack it like a hungry Viking, right? And then you're going to polish this off. Everything's made fresh. It's fantastic. And then you're going to polish it off with a coffee or a water or a soda or a mini soda, whatever you want. They got it all, right? To Paul's Bagel and Brunch, there's no better way to start your day. I love it. If yeah. you're ever heading over that Bay Bridge down the ocean, and you find yourself, you know, with the family, and you need just, you need something that'll stick to your ribs, something that's gonna just feed your soul, <laughs> feed your <laughs> belly ribs. and your soul. This is the type of stuff. It's it's you know made. Come on, it's made by an Italian. So yeah, you know. Oh, all the, right. uh, so the Italian. All right, Alvin. Great yeah. shout out. Love that guy. Love that family. Love that bagel shop. Let's it, get into what's awesome. your rate. All right. What you, what you All right. Love this segment, but try and make it quick as possible. So uh, it's December 1st. U.S. consumer confidence rose for the first time in four months. For the first time in what seems like years, probably about 18 months, there's optimism from consumers and from the Federal Reserve. Yeah. Uh, there's murmurs that the Fed believes that they may have inflation in check. There's some murmurs that they could potentially lower the Fed fund rate. Uh, Q1, we'll see what happens with that. But right in the here and now, the bond isn't rising. Mortgage rates are have improved for the second week in a row. Uh, so we're seeing some good trends. Al, are we finally crawling out of this uh, two-year cage match here within our business? God bless America, Ab. I mean, we've been doing this show for three months, right? And we haven't had one God bless and positive thing to say about the rate. Last week was a little bit positive, but we weren't sure if it was going to stick, right? Mm -hmm. and now, I don't want to jinx it. I don't want to jinx it, but it looks like we might be finally trending in the right direction. So T-Bill's at, uh, what, 4.3, I believe it is today, 4.34, okay? Looking pretty good. It's good. Significantly it's good sig off of a five, off of five. Significantly, a month ago, yeah, it was almost at five, and here we are at 4.3. So with that, as we know, rates are going to come down as well. Um, so... <clears throat> I'm not saying this is we're out of it yet, but it's looking good. Might be high time for Uncle Al to invest in some new podcast equipment, maybe. Right? Maybe our yeah. old our deadbeat old sponsor, not to Paul's Bagel and Brunch, but the old one can finally uh, can finally peel off a couple dollars to give me some new stuff. We'll see. We will see. We shall see. Uh, the uh, you know. Let's, we could take it into our own hands. Let's close a bunch of loans and get you a 4K camera and, and a mic and some headphones, even if you don't plug it in. And it's I'd, just rather, <laughs> I'd rather peel it out of uh, North Furnishing's hands, to be completely honest. Yeah. I'll so this is, about the time of the sh this is about the time of the show where we would welcome our guests, but he got up and left. So we're just going to move on with the show. <laughs> left? He's gone. He's just gone. I don't know where he went. I guess he had something more important to do. There's nothing but more to do. hey, hey, look, you know, it's how it's how it goes when you have high profile guests. He's probably off getting uh, I don't know, hair spring, makeup, drinking some. No, nah, he's probably drinking uh, uh coconut water from the Himalayas double, or something. Double frosted chai latte. Too yeah, pumped. he's got the only coconut water from the Himalayas. There he is. He's back. Too so, um, coconut. All right, let's let's hit let's hit frequently asked questions or FAQs. Al, um, facts and queries. calls it facts and queries. What do you got, Al? So, what's with the acronyms, right? In the mortgage world these days, it's getting out of control. You've probably heard of them: LTV, DTI. But what are they, right? Now, you know something along the lines of. The DTI is too high. You're not going to qualify, right? Your LTV is over 80. You're going to have PMI. We got to get your LTV down. Get rid of that PMI so we can lower your DTI. You know what I'm saying? And get you to and get you to qualify. Get you to so qualify. it's a lot of jargon. It's a lot of mumbo jumbo. But DTI and LTV, they're just like Al said, acronyms. They are ratios, percentages. LTV is loan to value. Debt to income ratio is debt to income. Or DTI, I'm sorry. DTI is debt to income. Each loan type, VA, FHA, conventional, they have different LTV and DTI ratio requirements to qualify. So loan to value is determined by your down payment or your equity and the home's value. DTI is 
debt to, is is determined by debt and income. Yeah. Um, so it, it's it's just a fancy or not fancy way of just kind of shortening it. It's not it's no no big deal. So basically, if you're buying a home for 400 Ks, right, and you want to put down five percent, your LTV is going to be 95 percent. Exactly. And, uh, and then just to complicate things a bit, um, the LTV is the loan amount, like you just said, 380000 divided by the purchase price, 400000 which equals 95%. Two ways of skinning a cat, but, uh, you know, you get the point. Yeah. So, and then your, your DTI, right, your debt to income is basically <clears throat> your debt divided by your monthly income. So if you make $10,000 a month, right and you have two thousand five hundred dollars of monthly expenses like car payment and um credit cards personal loans whatever they may be those are twenty five hundred and your new mortgage payment is going to be an additional twenty five hundred right so you're talking about five thousand dollars total in expenses it's that five thousand dollars in expenses divided by ten thousand right your total income which comes out to be 50%. So your debt to income ratio in that scenario is 50%. Easy way. Right. Yeah. So it's, it's really simple, but we, you know, everybody likes to be a little mysterious and sound important. So we talk in acronyms, you know, like what's your DTI? It depends on your LTV. So does PMI. Unless there's MIP. What's the AMI? I, I, did you get an AVM? Did you run DU? No, I ran LP. Does it have HOI? It's included in the HOA. Any DPA? No, but uh, you might go ahead and get yourself a HELOC. It's going to mess with your CLTV. All right, that's enough. You're sounding like a bit of a nympho, acro nymphomaniac, Al. A little, little, bit, little bit of TMI. All right, let's move on. Next segment. So, next segment. We have hot takes. This is where we share maybe some of our uh, hot takes. And we'll make it quick. The one that I have this week is um, it's funny to me that when rates went from 6 to 7, 7% was the worst rate ever. And recently, rates went from 8 to 7, and 7 all of a sudden is great. I'm here for it. I love it. I'm happy with positivity, but it's just funny to me the perception of the same exact rate um, changes depending on what's happening. Um, yeah. And, and then to go along with that, the objection of I'm waiting on rates to go down, uh, my hot take about that is, you know, don't just arbitrarily say that. It's, it's, it's what, what, okay. If you say that, what rate are you waiting for? Is it yeah. about rate? Is it about payment? Is it, have you thought this through or are you just, going along with the media, going along with, you know, everybody else and saying, oh, I'm waiting for rate. So if you are waiting for rate, define what you're waiting for. So then you yeah. can have a target and then you know when to get in the market. Hot takes, Ab. Very hot takes. Love that. So that's that second one. Because it's so true. All the talking heads, when you turn on the news, right, are like, rates are too high. People are never going to buy and this and that. But then if you actually talk to professionals in the industry, they're telling you, you know, this is the perfect time if you can afford it, right? So you got to have a game plan. You have to have a game plan, which is where you might want to talk to, you know, maybe me or Ab, right? <clears throat> Get yourself a game plan, figure out what you want to do, right? So then you can, you can pounce when the time is right. So I'm actually kind of going to piggyback off of that a little bit um you know you don't want to make your decision just based on rate right you want to make your decision based on how much you want to spend if you make it based to you know a rate is going to be an indicator of what the amount you're going to spend is but you need to know exactly what that number is going to be otherwise you're just waiting on you know an, a rate arbitrarily for no reason right because there's other things that are changing as the rates are coming down values are going up and when values go up, property taxes go up, right? Um, homeowners insurance has gone up, I think, over the last year or so, um, 21% is a national average. It's gone up over, it's gone up about 21%. So homeowners insurance is going up that much. Property taxes are going up. Values are going up, right? So all because you're waiting for the rate to come down. So, you know, it all, it all, it's all coming from the same pot. It's all coming from the same pot of money. So while you're waiting for this one to come down, these are going up. What's your balance, right? So figure out a number that you want, that you feel comfortable with. Um, 
that what you want that monthly payment to be and then go from there and then you know you talk to a professional like myself or abs here um and we'll be able to let you know you know how close you are to that number or what you'll need to do to get a little bit closer or find you know stay within the range that you're looking for so yep good piggyback love it great information uh and yes certainly need to to, to talk to a professional and make a plan you can't just throw it out there oh wait, wait. All right, so next segment, let's rip through this so we can get this guest in. I'm really excited for him. I'd like to oh. get through this and get, get him on the, on, the, on the line. So our opinionated this week, or my opinionated this week, um, it's, uh, it has to do with new, new conforming loan limit. Uh, the Federal Housing Finance Agency, FHFA, today or earlier this week announced the baseline conforming loan limit for mortgages acquired by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac conventional conforming loans in 2024, will go up to 766550 Okay? That's a $40,000 increase just from last year. So uh, it's pretty crazy. So how does this affect our, our consumers? How does it affect you buyers? Well, it simply um, raises the bar for how much of a home you can purchase with conforming terms. Conforming yeah. terms meaning minimum down payment and conforming uh, competitive interest rates without going – into that jumbo realm right it's a little it's a little shocking to me to see how much this has gone up it um it's just an indication of how much values have gone up if they're you know moving the baseline up so quickly uh it's just an it's indication a pretty of big just, jump it's, it's a, a pretty big jump yes it's huge it's a big jump yeah i mean i remember when i feel like when i got into it, it was like what was it or maybe not long after it was four sixteen and a half or something like that. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, and it was like that for for a cut for a while for like yeah. the first five same deal. We got in you about the same time, but yeah, yeah. for the first few years, it, and now it seems like it's changing every year. Every so year, that's just an right? indication. Yeah, and yeah. big changes. Like that's what's crazy is it's like it stayed that way for a while, and then all of a sudden now the values are through the roof. It's like well we got to up it, we got to up it, we got to up it. So it's um. That's pretty crazy. It's something that I, I didn't think that we'd see happen so fast, you know. Yeah. So, but on the positive side, it, it's cool. It's great. You can buy a, a, you could buy eight hundred thousand dollars house with five percent down. Right. Um, whereas you could not come close to that four or five years ago. No yeah. way. You'd have to put twenty percent down to get you down to a conforming loan limit. So right. it's cool. We'll see how it. How, we'll see how it pans out. Bold move, Al. Bold move. Bold, the old FHFA bold strategy. Very bold strategy. Let's see how it plays out. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's great. It's a great, uh, it's a great opinionated crab. Great opinionated. All right. Fantastic. Why don't we go ahead and bring in, I don't want to puff him up too much, but he could be the most handsome guest we've had to date. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Let's not, I don't want to, I don't want to do that. I don't want to puff him up. I don't want to puff him up. All right. All right. All right. Well, without further ado, the man himself jmu football legend ellerson boys mainstay i mean he's got it marked on his skin for the love of god he's not going anywhere there he is <laughs> michael clausen man hair and makeup did a number on you buddy and uh, they put the hat on they, they said the bald head was too much to to be I, think shine, it, so. I think it looks great. So just real quick, let's give a little background on Mike. Mike's a, a New York Times bestseller. Um, played in the NFL for a couple of years with the Bills, the Jaguars, the Redskins. Um, uh, he is Pats. one. Huh? Pats. It wasn't. It, huh? <laughs> what? What did he say? I don't know. I don't know. Go is, on. Skip it. I'll let it uh, go. <laughs> Apparently, Abby thinks I played for the Patriots at one point. Yeah, I was just say I you never played for the Patriots. It's well, one of us is really good friends with Mike. So anyway, uh, he's <laughs> he's an absolute JMU legend. Um, I mean, this guy, sixty six receptions, uh, over a thousand yards, fourteen touchdowns, only one fumble loss in his entire career. Um, to uh, hold up, I think we got it in the Alex. Nope. But Allison. Yeah. So all in all, I mean, what a career. Um, what a guy. What a guy. We're so, so glad to have him on the show. <clears throat> okay. I need to I need to capture that whole soundbite and just use that for anything else I ever do in the future. That's gonna be they're like, Hey, you want us to talk to you up yeah, here? Here's a script. This is exactly what I want you to say. 
That's perfect. Well, um, you did you did do that with a voicemail I left and made it your voicemail greeting. This is true. And then I became business professional on how to take <laughs> take it away. <laughs> well, that's a good segue. So that's a good segue. So you went from NFL, you know, college stud, NFL, uh, podcast, New York Times bestseller, and then as you said, transitioned into business professional. So that profession now is a uh, health advisor. Mm. It is. Licensed health advisor. appointed health advisor in all its mm. glory. And I know it sounds very, very exciting. And let me tell you, it's not as exciting as it sounds. <laughs> it's not the glamorous lifestyle it sounds like, Mike. Believe it or not, it's not as exciting as mortgages. Yeah. Right. But here, you know what's crazy though is like for you guys, who would have, you know, when we were all in college and think about what we want to do with our lives, and if someone were to tell both of you, hey, you're going to be in the mortgage industry. Now, Ab, you have a family lineage there a little bit, so maybe that was more believable. But mm -hmm. at the same time, we're like, hey, this is what you're going to do, and, and you're going to enjoy it, and you're going to make a living doing this. Yeah. We all would have called those people like, there's no way. There's no, you guys would have been like, there's no way I'm doing mortgages. Yeah. I'm like, there's no way that I'm going to be in health insurance. But knowing, you know, we've all been friends for over 15 years now. The kind of people that we are, we do enjoy helping others and being an asset to people. Absolutely. And, and for me, I know for health insurance, that's what I enjoy the most about it. Being able to educate somebody on something that, we all need just like mortgages, right? We right. all have to deal with it at some point, hopefully for mortgages in our life that we all get the opportunity to, to purchase a home and no one ever wants to deal with it. Yeah. But to have somebody that enjoys to educate people is is definitely the upside to- A lot of knowledge to give you knowledge. It's a great point, Michael. Yeah. And what's important, I think, and where maybe we find our stride is um, being able to deliver uh, information and, and transmit information that may be either boring or complicated in a way that's understandable. And and you know what, uh, Mike, I I've taken in a bit of your social media, your uh, health, your insurance, uh, social media, and I have to say that you've done a, you do a fantastic job with the whiteboard and kind of getting down to the nitty gritty and, and explaining it in a way that is consumable. It's like this is just like boring, tough information to just like digest. You make it, um, you know, that way. So mm -hmm. good job on that. And not bad uh, to look at either. Looking like a snack at that well, yeah. whiteboard. Or whiteboard mic. That helps. Yeah, that whiteboard <laughs> against that that uh, <laughs> olive skin. Are you kidding me? Oh, six foot five. You waste. Come on. I'll You're watch too much, twice. guys. You're I'll too watch much. Twice. <laughs> the beard. I'm out here just trying to riz up, as the kids would say, riz. I'm trying to riz up the, you know, the insurance world and just make it. Man, you're trying to connect with every audience, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Make it sexy. Yeah. Make it fun. You know. Right. You're the you're the thirst trap of insurance. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you know. Have you guys seen that guy on TikTok? It's like Thor Bradley. He does like the wood chopping, and he does it in like suspenders, and he just yeah. like. Uh -huh. Makes love to the camera when he chops wood, and every just the 25 to 45 year old women female demographic is just drooling over him. I was like, maybe I need to riz up, like you know, some yeah. health insurance. Start wearing suspenders. Maybe take them off when the conversation gets a little crazy. Oh. You know, talking HMO, PPO, going off of the you know the acronyms that you guys are talking about. Talk nice dirty to me dude. now. Oh, I'm heating Come up on. over here. Talk dirty to me. Oh. <laughs> Oh shit! All right, so so let's uh, let's get into some questions for for Mike here, uh, mm -hmm. pertaining to his profession, and mm -hmm. see if he can do what he does best and explain some things really concisely. Uh, yeah. So first things first, Mike. What, what softball? What's a copay? You hear about copays? I don't. What is a copay? Yeah, great question. Nobody knows. Great question, Ab. Copays. It's funny when people. I'll get people on the phone. They'll say, "Hey, I want to plan with copays." And I'm like, okay, you're adorable. Clearly you don't understand. And that's fine. I'm here to educate you. Copays are smoking <laughs> mirrors, adorable. right? Copays are smoking mirrors. They seem like a good deal. Cause it's like, oh, $25 to go see my doctor. A copay is basically a glorified admission fee. The analogy I use is it's like a cover charge at a bar. It gets you in the door, but it ain't going to buy you a drink. Mm. Right? So if you have a, if you have a $25 copay, you go in and see your doctor. Well, the doctor checks you out. You're obviously there for a reason. The doctor's like, hey, you know what? You got some chest things going on. 
I want to do an x-ray on this. Your copay is not covering your x-ray. You're paying more likely than not on majority of insurance plans, employer plans, uh, public marketplace plans, which is Obamacare. You're paying out of pocket for that x-ray until you satisfy your deductible. So copay just gets you in the door. Huh. Awesome. And the copay wow. does not go towards that deductible, right? It does not go towards your deductible. Man. Wow. See, now, I thought I was silly asking that question. I don't know what it is, but I figured everybody – that's a great explanation. Mm. So, and then at the tail end of it, you mentioned deductible. So, so what, what is a deductible? For sure. Deductible is the amount that you have to satisfy before the insurance company helps you out. So if you have a $5,000 deductible, again, on 90% of insurance plans that are out there, employer plans, public marketplace plans, again, Obamacare, those types of policies, if you have a $5,000 deductible, you are paying out of pocket for everything, for the most part, until you hit that. After the deductible is met, then you'll have coinsurance, right? That's where the insurance company pays a percentage of every bill until you hit your max out of pocket. Mm. 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 Man, what a delicious little nugget. Sexy, <laughs> sexy right. stuff, I know. Yeah, well, it's good to know. I mean, it is. especially, mm -hmm. you know, when you're building a family, people our age, mid 30s, you're, you're, you know, you're probably likely, you know, building that family. So it's good to right. know this stuff, especially when, you know, if you have kids and they get sick or something, God forbid something happens and you're in the hospital for a while, like you need to know this stuff. So, yeah. well, that's so, the, that's the issue real quick. Ab, that's the whole issue with it where people, if they don't understand how it works, and they have a kid, God forbid, get really sick or, or have something occur where they have to go to the emergency room. Emergency room is one of those things. There's no real co-pays for emergency rooms. Some employer plans might have some benefit for that. But if you're just getting a public marketplace plan, government plan, you don't have any co-pay towards emergency room. So you're going to go to the ER. Then you're going to get hit with this bill that's probably going to be a four-figure medical bill. And you're like, wait a second, I haven't... But and people argue, they're like, I have insurance. Like, why do I have this $4,000 bill? And they're like, hey, your deductible is X. Right. You have to pay this full price. And people are like, then what am I paying for insurance for if this isn't covered? And so it's just that preconceived notion that, you know, people might not understand how it works. I've never called and asked why I had insurance. Never done that before <laughs> in my life. No, you're not one so, to complain about. Me off. You bunch of crap. You're, you're not one to complain about society at all. <laughs> yeah, you? yeah, yeah, right. Buddy, I need to take off my shoes if I wanted to count the amount of times I called the insurance company and went ballistic about something. What are you going to do, right? <laughs> um, no, that's uh, that's fantastic. That's good stuff to know. You know what I am curious about? I don't know if you heard us talking about um, like homeowner's insurance, how much it's gone up right recently how much are you seeing that kind of impact in today's economy in your you know in in health insurance um a lot significantly yeah. so back in 2020 uh the government did like an american relief act right where basically they were reducing the premiums for everyone in the country that had a government-based insurance policy to help alleviate that monthly premium cost because of COVID, because of people being out of work, because of the, the, the state the economy was in. Well, that's all ending ending come January 1st, 2024. So people who are out there right now in open enrollment looking for a policy, those rates, they're probably looking at the numbers being like, are you kidding me right now? This is what yeah. I have to pay? Because it's just gone through the roof. Yeah. And there's a lot of there's a lot of employers that are also doing that where because of the state of the economy, they're reducing the percentage that they're covering towards their employees coverage. So I'm getting more calls from people that are like, yeah, I have employer coverage, but they're not covering as much as they used to. So yeah. it went up $200 a month. Right. Right. So it's definitely been an issue. So I'm assuming you would advise same as me and Ab would in this difficult economy where rates are high and the cost of things is high. Um, we always advise you to have a conversation with us. Doesn't mean it's going to go anywhere, but at least so you have a little bit of knowledge. And if it does go somewhere, we'd love to represent you. So I'm assuming it's similar for you. At least reach out to old Mikey Bones over here, old Mikey Whiteboard, and have mm -hmm. a conversation and get an idea of what's going on so you can make an uh, educated decision. Right. And that's exactly what well, Al well said, sir. What, what a soft talk that was for me.
but no, that's exactly it. I like I like to talk to people and educate them on what their options are. Because again, I don't I'm not affiliated with one company. I am an independent health advisor. Some people call it insurance sales. I don't look at it as sales because I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm educating you on what is available to you given your situation. Yeah. And the private marketplace, which is more of what I represent, I try to steer people towards if they qualify, can alleviate a lot of those uh, rate increases, you know, issues with high deductibles, trying to satisfy those and all that because you get upfront benefits on private market plans because they're health-based as opposed to income-based. Yeah. And I assume like most private industry, most private sectors of industry, uh, it causes competition, which causes, you know, people to be sharp with their rates and costs and all that mm-hmm. stuff. So, uh, Mike, where, where are you licensed? Where can you, where can you issue, where can you help people? For sure. I'm licensed in over 28 states, uh, majority of like the Southeast and Midwest, um, as far as Nevada, as north as Maryland and Wisconsin, all through the, the Midwest there. The Northeast, so then here's the thing about insurance too, is that, yes, the public market is fed, federally regulated. Outside of that, when it comes to the private market, every state has their own commissioner, just like other industries, right? Where they can decide what's available in their state in terms of the private market. So. To no surprise, the West Coast kind of does their own thing. Um, And then the Northeast kind of does their own thing. So the states in those areas, I can't really do anything with, but pretty much anywhere else in the country, I'm able to help out. Very good. Nice. Well, you know, I had a couple more insurance questions for you. I'm thinking that maybe maybe we get into a, a couple other just personal questions. What do you think, Al? You think that's okay? I think that's fantastic. I think it's a great idea. I don't know where this is going either. I'm very excited. Well, I think it's I think that that is exciting that you know everybody gets all you know all excited when you know you have an opportunity to talk to a, perform, a former professional athlete. So so you know one thing you know is there anything that you learned in your time in the NFL or your time as an athlete that that is serving you today as a, as you know a professional? Great question, Ab. Mm. Um, yeah. You know, those are the ones, those are the one. those are the questions you shoot for, right? You always want the person to have to sit there and think about their answer, not just regurgitate some. Not me. I know. give golf balls. I love great <laughs> fruit. Two different. I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but I know no, no, it's something great. There. You, you want to encourage the, the thinking and the dialogue. It's, um, for me, I think it's the same things that got me to be successful or like get to the level of the NFL. um, It was just kind of like the work ethic and mindset aspect. So I think from that with this industry, you know, I'm self-employed, everything is hundred percent commission. Um, You have to invest financially, your time, your money, uh, your heart and soul kind of in this industry to become successful. And the only way out is pretty much through. And just the resiliency I've, 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 learned and garnered from my time being a professional athlete and making it to that to that arena is definitely helped me in this where it's like overcoming adversity and all those things so that's the, the biggest takeaway i think for me that i'm taking from that period of my life and putting it into this one i mean that's great well said Michael. and 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 i think that 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 shows true i mean hard work mm-hmm. and uh and just the dedication is definitely important and clearly something that that you know, you exemplify. So, all right, cool. Um, Al, what else you got for our boy here? So we mentioned all your stats and your accolades, um, you know, 14 touchdowns, a thousand yards, that one fumble loss. Do you think that changed the trajectory trajectory of your life at all? You know, it's funny because when I finally made it in the NFL, you know, I, I would talk to some of the scouts in the scouting department, you know, and I would ask them, I'm like, Hey, you know, I'm here now. I got calls on draft day that you guys were going to draft me. What, you know, what kind of happened on on why you didn't want to draft me with the earlier pick now that I'm here and and everything. And they looked and they said, you know, Carson, we love you. um, But ball security, we saw this one highlight 
and ball security really became a thing. And I was like, hey, you know, but but so and so, like, I, I had one fumble in my entire collegiate career. One, one. not even like one lost fumble. That was the only time I ever fumbled the football ever. Get out of town. Uh, out of out of sixty six catches in, um, and yeah, he's just like, yeah, just really, you know, the fact that it was your senior year, you're a captain, and you had one fumble. Um, <clears throat> and that's yeah. and that's always been kind of a question mark, right? That ball security thing. And I I noticed that when I was watching tape, when I was watching you, is that you're so great in all these different things. And I wanted to be a good friend because we were friends long before that happened. But it was like, how can I help Mike be better? You need to punch Expose the ball. Expose his out. weakness. Expose, Expose his weakness. weakness so he can build on it and be better, right? And it wasn't so I could hold it over your head for the rest of your life, right? It was just because I wanted to make you better. So you're welcome. Yeah. You're welcome, Mike. <laughs> As we know, we owe everything in our lives that, that have been successful to Al, but I think everyone in our yep, group, yep. just like our friendship group, the Ellerson boys, wouldn't happen if it weren't for Al, but. Oh, stop it. Stop it. And you know, if it wasn't for him about... forcing us to dedicate a whole weekend to him, we wouldn't be here. And, and I think and there's a lot of to continue with the celebration for years. That's not enough time. And you looking good at the whiteboard. I'm so tired. And so you get tired of it too. But it's like, ow, you're so handsome. And ow, you're so funny. And ow, you're so smart. And it's like, yeah, but I'm so much more, right? Don't put me in a box. And I kind of think <laughs> right. that you feel the same way. If I'm, is that right? It's like a burden, isn't it, Al? It's, it it's, 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 it's your cross to bear. But the only way out is through, to quote a great man that was once on a podcast, right? So. We just let, me, let me, let me, let uh, me, let me turn the turntables here a little bit because I was, you know, I was sitting in the waiting room and, and listening to you guys and, you know, Ab, you know, you helped me out on the first purchase of my, you know, on my first home and everything. And that was awesome for people who are, because the interest rates are so crazy right now and the way it's been, I know you guys said things are looking to come down. Like what advice do you give for first time home buyers who you know, are really itching. Maybe, maybe it's just like a, a, uh, a goal they had set for themselves. Right. And that's the kind of mentality we have. It's like being able to purchase your first home is like a, a, a box to check of success or that you're doing well in life. You're on the right trajectory. Right. So for those younger people who are looking to do that, even though the market is what it is, like what kind of advice do you guys have for them? Is it, Hey, don't rush the process. Or if your mindset on this, these are things to look out for. So, um, you know, f from my perspective, uh, it comes down to the individual, um, you know, what their budget is. And I think that's more important than focusing on interest rates. And mm -hmm. then in a time like this, it might be a pretty good time for a first time home buyer because so many people are stepping away from the market. Yeah. Whereas, when it got crazy, it, it crazy, crazy competitive, when interest rates were like 2%, 3%, there was like, it was so competitive that it it really kind of shut a lot of those first-time home buyers. If you were a first-time home buyer, if you were doing an FHA loan, if you didn't have the money to to put, to throw more cash down on the house, if the if it underappraised, which was happening a lot, like it shut a lot of those first-time home buyers out of the market. So, right. Mm -hmm. This this these high interest rates have almost has almost opened some doors to the first time home buyers, um, and then, you know, you might be a first time home buyer buying a million dollar house. You're probably not. So the lower right. the loan amount, the less it is affected. I get it, affordability is affected by rate, but the lower the loan amount, the lower the purchase price, the less that that rate really comes into to effect. You know, three and a half, a difference in three percent in a rate is uh, different. If it's for a three hundred thousand dollar loan versus a seven hundred thousand dollar loan, it just has a different weight behind it. So um, the effect is is a little bit less. So, like to sum it up, I think it's actually a pretty decent time if you are a first time home buyer to maybe sneak in. Yeah, I'd agree with that. It's hard. I mean, it's it's definitely hard right now with the cost of things. And that's a great. This is a really good question, Mikey. Um, I think that I think one of the biggest things that I would say to a first time home buyer now is don't get caught up in the rat race. It's so easy mm -hmm. in social media to mm -hmm. see what everybody else is doing. Right. And it's like, well, they just bought a million dollar house. Right. I need to buy a million dollar house. Well, no, you don't. Right. You're at a right. different point in your life. Right. That's not what you need to do. You need to make a good investment. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's the should be the focus is, yeah, you want to buy a house. You want to check that box. Everybody wants to buy their first house. <clears throat> don't 
don't become part of the rat race and just chase somebody else on social media, you know, for likes and comments to make it look like you're doing well. We'll switch up, um, <laughs> you know, make a good investment that's going to help you out buying your next house and, you know, your, your forever home, right? Or right. Have to be able to hang on to turn into an investment property. It's going to end up working for you. Um, so I think that's one of the bigger things, especially now in the social media climate and, you know, with the economy where it is, make a good investment. Right, that's gonna Can happen. I ask? I want to ask one more question. Sorry, I like I like asking questions too, but because I'm I'm genuinely interested on y'all's perspective because this is the first we've talked kind of like business stuff here in a while. But you know, on your point now about like the social media aspect and the rat rats and everything. Now, because of TikTok and and all those things, you see all these little sound bites of people, and I feel like just like anything, right? You could you could Google research. Is co coffee good for you or is coffee bad for you? And you can find articles that say but either, you know, whatever side narrative you want to believe. When it comes to renting versus buying, yeah. right? I feel like you can find someone that's like, well, you got to buy. Buying is the best thing. Renting is just throwing your money away and all this. And then you'll see another guy that says, renting actually ain't that bad. And yeah. I'm, rent I'm in a position where I'm renting now and I've been fortunate and blessed to be able to own a home for the last. 10 plus 10 years right and now i'm renting for the first time in a long time and i'm like honestly this feels kind of good yeah. i'm like the less of the responsibility if something happens to the house like people have this mindset of like i have to buy i have to buy i have to buy i'm like yeah but if anything goes wrong that's on the homeowner not you right right Absolutely. and and so it, it's it's stress relieving to an extent of not having to worry about that so do you guys have a a a mindset around that whole topic. I think I'll take this one first, Dad, if you don't mind. Go ahead. Stand uh, down. I'm not too proud to stand down. Um, no, I think it. I think it's person to person. To be completely honest, I don't think. I. I think if you get caught up listening to the sound bites and researching, yeah. it's paralysis by analysis. Right. You're going right. to keep researching until you actually move in a direction. Have a conversation, like we talked about earlier. Talk to a professional. They can give you an idea of what the costs are going to be buying versus renting. Obviously, nobody, we don't have a crystal ball. We don't know where rates are going to be, but you know, history says they're going to come down at some point, right? So when is that going to be? When's the good time to buy and then refinance? If it's not now, when will it be? Right. And and what will that cost be to where it makes sense for you to buy as opposed to rent? So I think that depends on the person. Um, and I, you know, rather than, you know, do a little bit of research, read a couple articles one way or the other, but I wouldn't spend too much time doing that without talking to somebody, you know, to get it. Subscribe to, community. subscribe to, sorry to cut you off Al, but in addition to you reading your articles and whatnot, maybe subscribe to a weekly mortgage show, whether you're renting or not. I don't know Just if there are information. We could probably recommend one. That's a great idea. It's a really good idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and I f I share the same opinion as Al. It's it's up to it. It comes down to the person, and it's there's no like rule of thumb. I don't believe, uh, but it, it's where like where are you in your life? What what what? Where do you find value? Uh, and if if having some mental relief of not, you know, owning and taking some time to rent, and you can just kind of f pay it and forget about it. Um, if there's value there for you personally, then that's where the value is, and and that's what you should do. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. That's a great point. Good question. And you know what? It feels so good to be on the Mike Carlson show. I didn't think we'd ever be here. Ever. I know, right? So, dude, you know, it's I, well. I, I was going to say something similar, but not such, not in such a. Um, you know, I thought you said you were going to work on being a dick, Al. I I know. Well, no, it's I'm allowed to be a dick with Mike. It's just, <laughs> work, you you know, work on being a dick. He's a daily dick. <laughs> no, no, no. Double I mean, like, work on here. that. I'm a to work. Oh, he's going to work on it. Um, what you did know, you say with new people that don't know us when you have somebody like mm. Mikey whiteboards over here who's been through it right who knows what we're like then we can say these things without hurting feelings or worrying about anything you know well um so so it is cool having um a prof former professional podcast i mean you podcasted for a living for some time and a pretty popular and well-known podcast as far as podcast go i'm gonna be so, completely honest i completely forgot about that mm -hmm. completely forgot that you had your own podcast for years completely forgot dude was in stu in studio i mean there's there's a reason he's asking us good questions i hey, know he's, well, he's, I, I, I forgot dude he also wrote a book very... around telling people mikey 
that New York Times bestseller, right? It's Mikey Ellerson or Mikey the old football player, right? Or Mikey can't yeah, pronounce yeah. German chocolate cake. <laughs> The only thing that you introduce him is that guy that you made fumble one time. I never said that I made him fumble. Did I? Hold up. Yeah. No, I think that was Allison nice. Butt. I think you said Allison Butt. <laughs> My fault. My fault. You're right. Al. So, um, all right. Well, uh, we're coming up on the 45 minute mark. Anything else that you wanted to touch on? Uh, Mike, can you, so your right eyebrow. Oof. Is that a scar, or did you shave that in? Yeah, that's a good question. My right eyebrow? Okay, your left eyebrow. The one that looks like Is it has just... a mark in it. That's good. Or did uh -huh. you do that on purpose for character? Oh. Oh. What the fuck is that? Tell me that's uh. natural. Or That's like a Cindy Crawford mark. Ooh, it is. Is it? Right here, Are here. you doing that? <clears throat> All natural. I think, no. I think, I think he did that. He did that in, uh, in hair and makeup. <laughs> mm -hmm. Abby will wash it out. Abby will wash it out in post. Don't worry. <laughs> you keep building up my post skills. I know. I always throw your in your editing. Abby your, in post. Your, your editing skills are incredible. They are. He does a great job. He does. Yeah, I'm really. It's a I'm freaking really, bear, dude. I I can only imagine in you know doing my videos. I thought I was like you know I could, and I'll start to evolve when I do my Instagram videos. But I'm like. I would love to edit these a certain way, but I know the tedious nature of, of yeah. round editing a little bit. And I'm, I'm impressed by what you're able to do, Ab. So good job. You you had to do editing on your podcast. Or not, there was somebody that did editing, editing for the podcast, right? Did yeah. You, there, did you learn it all from them or was that all done completely separate by like the media had company? A full crew, or... Production company. Right. Yeah, we had a full, because it was all iHeartMedia. So right, right. So but they I, provided was, it? Yeah, they provided it. Um, so they did all that, but a lot of the stuff that, you know, my ex and I did editing, like we would edit Instagram stuff together and, and I saw and experienced how tedious that is and it, it's yeah. a pain in the butt and I just, I don't have the patience for it sometimes, but yeah. as you guys know and how, how much work it takes, also how beneficial it is and how well it can really wrap things up yeah. and kind of put a bow on it, which is why I wanted to also ask some questions because I want to be able to take some of the questions like the questions i ask and be able to post on my instagram so people can get some nuggets from you guys and drive traffic to this right oh. so it's like not just me they hear me talk on mine all the time where it's like hey i was on podcast i'm educating you about health insurance if you need education about mortgage and stuff like that here's where to go oh mikey traffic driver love that <laughs> Yeah, what that's, a guy. Well, that's great. And, you know, hopefully you get some value of being on this and, and being uh, exposed to our audience, too. Maybe maybe we get a couple good good sound bites out of it and yeah. uh, get some just organic stuff going. Um, but, you know, we're at a point in our lives, man. I think that we all need to support each other, friends, mm -hmm. family and stick together. It's hard out there in these streets and we all just you got to you got to stick together. But there's only one thing that follows that follows uh, hard work, and that's results. So it all pans out. Ooh. It's a little weird out there these days with the economy and with the with the world. But uh, you know, you know, you know. Ab, sometimes, like that. sometimes when you're in a dark place, you feel like you're being buried, but really you're being planted. Oh, man. I didn't come to work with one of these. I didn't get the memo. <laughs> right? Like, come on, man. Elementary. What? Elementary Al over here. Yeah, well, um, you know, you just wake up and, and work, work hard. hard and good things will happen. Create your own luck. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. Original. The only way out is through. Uh, mm. yeah. All right, double down. <laughs> you didn't steal that. Um, all right. So, uh, you know, I appreciate you coming on. Mm -hmm. I appreciate uh, Al being – you know, being able to uh, bring up his past football glory, we'll do anything that we can to allow him to reference his notes and figure out who caused that fumble. I still can't find it. I, I, <laughs> it's somewhere in here. All right, I have edited it out in post. Yeah, I'll jump on it, man. I'll jump right on it. Mike, thanks so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure. And uh, 
yeah, just to learn some tidbits about your industry and and just to chop it up with a good buddy that's in a different and you know an expert, a a guy that's paving the way in a different paving industry. Paving the way. You know. That's it. I appreciate you guys having me. I could sit here and do this all day. And you know, I had my head on. I had my head on forward to start, and then I saw we're we're doing backwards hats today, so I wanted yeah. to be part of the boys. Yeah. Well, you can't you can't have have uh, have your hat throwing a shadow on your face, especially when your fucking sh- your face is your money maker, baby. Come on, I know. Sure is. I know. Shaking, shaking what Mama gave me. That's all you I got. Did. Yeah, thir- thirst trap. I'm hiding thirst it with a beard one. too. We're trying to be like Al over here. Yeah. Well, you Neanderthals. You, you Neanderthals. Why Al, don't you just evolve? let it. Al, let it grow. I'd be divorced. My wife would divorce what? me. Did I did it one it time in college. I looked like a hillbilly. I was walking around. It got so long that I could chew on it, and I would walk around and have my right. beard in the corner of my mouth, and I would chew on it all the time. And I was like, I gotta cut this. <laughs> People were like, You're gross. <laughs> you know, snag a little yogurt from breakfast or something. Like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Mine is to the point I can push in the sides and making I can put it between. Dude, my when it gets long enough, I love that. I always do. I hate, dude. I I hate when that happens, man. You I really never it ever freaks me out. How about how you will never, it's, no matter how hard it you try, so you will itchy. never experience that ever in your life. You'll never be able to. Experience oh yeah, that. So, yeah. You know, you wear it like a badge, like you like you've put in work to earn this beard. Like you have to try to grow it. It's just. Let me it let me ask happens. this because a- Abby and I are are we're like a Mr. Potato Head. We could complete each other, right? I've got great hair. I got great beard. Mm-hmm. Al, you got like you, you like halfway both ways. What if you had a choice? What would you rather have? You're breaking a up, great, Mike. I think I think we're losing a, him. Would you have a great beard <laughs> or great hair? Um. I, to be completely honest, Mike, I think I have the best of everything. I get the best of both worlds, right? Where you yeah. only have one and Ab only has one. Uncle Al's got both, right? I wouldn't say you got the best of both worlds. You got like okay, average, okay of both worlds. You're, yeah, but my you're, personality you're, brings it up, right? My personality and my and my quirky, my quirky. Yeah, you're you're I like the you're hair like hair the ugly friend. It's like, hair. oh, Al, he's got a great personality. Like that's how they describe you, right? Yeah, right, right. And like, 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 hey. Uh, I'm setting you up with this girl. Oh, is she hot? She's really funny. That's, okay. You know. Okay. Right. Well, but it's more like you know, man. Al's got a great personality. Not a bad beard either. It's like a lead-in. You know what nah, I mean? Nah, 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 nah. What's he like? He's like, uh, he's got a great personality. You're gonna love him. All right. Well, maybe we'll pull the uh, we'll pull the audience. How about that? Why don't we put it out to the folks? <laughs> pull it, Ab. Put up a thing. Pull. <laughs> put it in post. Do it. Pull. Ab, do, put up a poll and post. Right all right, all right, Al, take off your hat. Call us and take off your hat. <laughs> I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm not prepared for this. All right, so the poll is going to be, would you rather have Carlson's beard and no hair or Al's... Combination of... Al's somewhat beard, somewhat out hair. Forehead, stress forehead. <clears throat> I mean, you know, or it's would not you... terrible right now. It's got no volume. You know... So... I've been wearing a hat so did all you, did, I no did you purposely did you purposely shave that that side up higher? Like did your hair grow there? Or did you just shave it up higher? Well no, it's in case you need to call Batman, they just shine a light on my forehead. <laughs> bad signal. <laughs> the bad signal. Dude. Very good. <clears throat> all right, guys. I we're at fifty minutes. I love you both. I'm gonna cut you loose so we can all get some work work in today. Uh Carlson. I'll work on some of this. Hopefully get some clips out for us. It's been a pleasure. Hopefully we'll have you back sometime soon. Love you, buddy, and miss you. Love you, guys. Appreciate you. Love you, bitch. Mean it. All right. Hey, bitch. Mean it. All right. Later. Later. Until next time.